the whole bus was disabled simply because of this. What is going on today, guys? My name's Alex. Welcome back to the channel. We got another Wednesday night shop talk here. And uh, tonight we're gonna be talking about after treatment systems. Are they ruining these modern diesel engines? So if you guys don't know, all modern diesel engines have to come with what's called an after treatment system. It consists of a bunch of componentry that helps to clean um, the exhaust gases that come out of a diesel engine. A new diesel right now basically has net zero emissions. Um, the only thing that comes out of the exhaust is nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide. Now they don't consider carbon dioxide a environmental hazard because plant matter can use it. So that is what an after treatment system does. And we're gonna dive into why it might be ruining these diesels. So as a diesel mechanic, I do appreciate the technology. Um, you know, it is nice being able to work in a shop and have diesel engines running and, you know, not having this big cloud of black toxic smoke to breathe in every day. Because in that black smoke, there's carbon monoxide, um, nitric oxide, which is very toxic to humans, as well as um, diesel particulate matter, which is, again, not really good for, for the human lungs. And it is very contrary to what diesels used to have the reputation of being very dirty. They're actually extremely clean running engines right now. So allegedly these new diesels, when they were in LA, um, actually had cleaner air coming out of the tailpipe than the air around the truck, which is kind of cool. So without getting into too much detail, um, let's dive into what exactly an after treatment system consists and how those components help to clean the exhaust. So this is an IAC, ISB Cummins, basically a 6.7, a little bit different, it's a little more commercialized, not as much horsepower as your standard 6.7 uh, that would you get in a new pickup truck. I believe there's just about 300 horse in here. So the first implementation of any after treatment system was in 2003 with an EGR or exhaust gas recirculation and it does exactly what it sounds like. So right here, this is your exhaust gas cooler. Basically exhaust gases come out from the manifold, come through here, they're very hot so they get cooled, then they get piped over to the intake right here and this is your EGR valve right here. So basically what this does is this lets exhaust gases back into the intake and into the cylinders here. Now the purpose of EGR was mainly to try and combat nitric oxide. Like I said, it's very toxic to humans and it is produced um, in a very high temperature combustion engine, which a diesel is exactly that, a very high temperature combustion engine. In order to combat that, they, they recirculate exhaust gas back into the intake. And what that does is that ends up cooling the combustion chamber, um, therefore making less nitric oxide. However, there are some side effects that also creates more soot and more soot can have a number of implications. In 2007, in order to deal with that extra soot, the EPA required a DPF or a uh, diesel particulate filter to really filter out that diesel particulate matter. Let me show you what that looks like. Obviously this is the downpipe from the turbo up there. This is your exhaust. And right here is your DPF, and that is the filter that helps to filter out all that particulate matter. So having a DPF does reduce a lot of the diesel particulate matter, but what can happen is that filter will be clogged with soot, and eventually it needs to be burned off. So that is what a regen does. Nowadays, a regen actually dumps fuel down the exhaust um, to really get the DPF really hot and get a really good burn so it can burn all that soot into ash um, and really clean out those filters. However, there's a consequence from that. Nitric oxide is produced from high ignition temperatures. So what happened is, is there was a lot of nitric oxide leaving the exhaust because of the DPS getting so hot. So in 2012, this is when we start to see the SCR or the selective catalytic reducer. Uh, what that does is that helps to eliminate basically all the nitric oxide gases um, with the help of diesel exhaust fluid. Um, diesel exhaust fluid is 33% urea or like basically ammonia uh, and 66% water. Um, and when that is mixed in the SCR, there is a chemical reaction and it turns a nitric oxide to nitrogen and water, basically eliminating almost all of the toxic nitric oxide gases. So as we mentioned, that is your DPF, and then right after it, and that is your SCR canister right there. Now lastly, there's a DOC, a diesel oxidation catalyst, um, that is located before the DPF. Uh, basically it kind of acts like a catalytic converter car. Uh, it helps to um, transform hydrocarbons and nitric oxide into 
um, much less harmful gases with um, the mixture of oxygen. So all four of those are what contribute to an after treatment system on a modern diesel. When these things are running properly with a properly working after treatment system, they run extremely clean. But the big question is at what cost? So this is where the rubber meets the road. Um, without a word of a lie, I would say that like 90 to 95% of our check engine lights and engine work in general um, at the dealership was after treatment codes or after treatment work. After treatment check engine lights were like just money makers for our dealership. These systems just have like a lot of moving components. Um, they are somewhat complex, you know, between regens like hydrocarbon dozers, um, DPF filters getting clogged, sensors on DPF, sensors on the SCR, like wiring problems, software problems, uh, deaf line problems. And the other thing in, up in Canada, deaf can freeze. Um, so all the deaf lines have to be heated, which means there's an electrical element around all those deaf lines, which can rub. Um, and if one of those deaf lines rubs and the heater doesn't work, that'll send a check engine light. Um, there is just a lot of things that can go wrong. And odds are, if you own a diesel, um, you know, from 2012 to now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, these things just love to throw check engine lights. Fixing these things are generally not cheap. There has to be diagnostic work that goes into it. When you throw a check engine light, it doesn't just tell us what is wrong. There has to be diagnostic procedures to see what sensor has failed, what wire rubbed through, are the DPF filters clogged? Is the hydrocarbon dozer the problem? Is the DEF dozer an issue? Is the SCR clogged? <laughs> Is the DOC face clogged? There's a lot of things that can potentially go wrong. So you have to pay for diagnostic time first, as well as the components. Um, I know like a Knox inlet sensor, outlet sensor are like, you know, four or $500 a piece. Um, and oftentimes you end up changing both. It tends to be a lot of money when you have to repair these systems. And I think it's important to remember that these systems are legit like in the exhaust. Um, those hot exhaust gases pass through all those components and they get extremely hot and then they get cold. And they do that day in, day out. Um, if you ever looked at your exhaust pipe, it is like the most corroded thing typically on your vehicle. So just imagine having all that like, you know, intricate electrical um, componentry in there. Up here in Canada, all the road salt and road grime um, that gets up in here, like, you know, this is, it's basically, you know, a foot off the road. So it's gonna get full of crap. And you guys can even see, look at all the sand and salt and crap up there. So if one of those little rubber boots, you know, fails on those connectors, it's gonna get water, salt, all kinds of crap in there, and it's gonna corrode and it's gonna cause problems. And a mechanic like myself is gonna go have to go in there and start diagnosing what is the problem and hopefully find that issue quicker than later because it's gonna cost you. So here's the reason why I'm actually making this video is because of this plug. So this plug was the plug to a uh, def pump on a coach bus. The whole bus was disabled simply because of this. Has nothing to do with the drive line, has nothing to do with the engine. It has everything to do with the software. The software is what disabled that bus. So the last thing I'll touch on, on repairs is uh, the software. Uh, it's getting a little crazy right now because apparently the EPA has to um, okay any software updates on a diesel engine right now, which to me just seems a little bit, um, a little bit much, but it is what it is. The other cost of having an app treatment system on your truck is fuel economy. Um, Typically, from what I've seen, you're gonna to tend to burn about 20 to 30% more fuel with an after treatment system on the truck. Um, there's a number of reasons for that um, because the after treatment system, it just makes the engine harder to breathe and an engine that can't get as much air out is just not gonna be as efficient. Um, the other interesting one is when you regen. Now, um, most diesel engines, when they regen, they actually have a basically a fuel injector right after the turbo and injects fuel into the exhaust. Um, and that is just raw fuel going down there into the DPF to help burn all that soot and, um, off the filter. But that fuel is not used for moving the vehicle. It's just, move, it's just used to help burn off the DPF filter. So, you know, there's that and that's just not very efficient. There's some interesting trials going on in Europe from what I've heard involving like city buses. And apparently they are doing some trials to see whether or not 
um, a smaller displacement diesel without an after treatment system will burn less fuel than a um, diesel engine with an after treatment system on it. Now, the reason is they claim that, you know, burning fuel as a whole can contribute to a carbon footprint. And perhaps if a smaller displacement engine saves enough fuel, um, it could actually have a smaller carbon footprint um, than a uh, bigger diesel engine with an after treatment system on it, which is interesting. Now that leads me right into my third point, um, power loss. So the reason why that trial in Europe can get away with using a smaller displacement diesel and get the same power, let's say, is because there is power loss with an after treatment system. Like I said, it's trying to breathe, it's like trying to breathe through a straw. Um, you're gonna lose power. Um, and so what has to happen is you need a bigger displacement diesel engine with an after treatment system to get the same power results. Bigger displacement burns more fuel, having an after treatment system burns more fuel. So if you can have a smaller displacement diesel without an after treatment system, and those two factors burn less fuel, potentially your carbon footprint could be less than um, in a diesel engine with an after treatment system. But that's the hypothesis anyways. Um, we'll see if anything comes about of that. Back to my point, you do lose power with an after treatment system anywhere from 15 to 25%. Now it used to be um, highway trucks could run anywhere from like a nine to 12, 13 liter engine, no problem. Um, nowadays, it seems like there's highway trucks running, you know, 15, 16 liter engines um, for not even heavy haul purposes, just to run cargo up and down the highway. My personal theory on that is because you just can't get as much power out of a smaller, you know, 11 liter diesel engine anymore because it's got the after treatment system on it. So what's having to happen is the, the displacement of these diesel engines are having to get bigger um, to make the same power. In general, the after treatment system is gonna lower the life of the truck. I read somewhere like 50 to 100% less lifespan. I don't know if that's true, but I would agree that it probably does lower the life of the engine. Um, you know, just having the EGR um, is, is not good for the engine. It just adds so much soot into the cylinders um, and that soot can actually find its way down through the um, piston rings and into the oil and can actually make the oil somewhat gritty which can take out bearings. Now the big question is, should you delete an after treatment system on, let's say your pickup truck? And the answer is up to you. I mean, as a diesel mechanic, I can tell you, yes, it will extend the life of your engine with a proper tune. You will save on fuel, you will gain in power, all good things. However, um, I would really recommend that you guys um, pay attention to your local restrictions. Um, if you cannot use these trucks on road with an after treatment system, um, you know, that is your call. Pay attention to the restrictions because odds are, if you get caught, there will be a very large fine um, and you'll end up having to put the after treatment system back on anyway. So that's where I'll leave that. Lastly, if you guys have been following the channel, you know that I have a 2022 power wagon. I'm not saying this because I own a gas engine and you know, trying to uh, dismay the diesel option. I would have bought the power wagon if I had a Cummins or a 6.4 Hemi, I just like the truck. It's not to say that diesel engines can't get away from this. I think as the technology gets better and better, um, problems are gonna start to become less of an issue. I know Cummins, um, we just had a uh, local Cummins guy come into the shop and talk to us a little bit, and they are hoping to have a, you know, a one system after treatment system, if that makes sense, that is completely maintenance free, no filters, um, and basically problem free. That's what he said. Who knows if that's true? Uh, but it's interesting that Cummins is coming out with something like that. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked the video. Maybe you learned a thing or two. If you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you guys want to support the channel, drop a link down below. Um, but as always, we'll see you in the next freaking video.